I never knew my dad. He was married and had an affair on his wife, thus producing me. My mom worked two, three jobs to try to provide for me and my three siblings, and, and we were still not able to, to share a meal together. Or There was a lot of abuse. My mom abused us physically and verbally and, and emotionally. Um, not a great home, not a, uh, not a pretty picture. I started drinking, doing drugs, probably maybe 10 or 11. I was the kid that didn't have a dad. I was the kid, even whenever we were very young and we went to church, we stopped going because the, we were gonna be the three wise men, my brothers and I, and they wanted us to use our father's bathrobes. We didn't have dad, so we hid behind the couch when the bus came to pick us up one Sunday because we were so ashamed of that. And so there was just, there was a hopelessness. And so I think my drinking and using drugs, that became a way to just drown it out. Finally, whenever I was 16, um, I crossed the line, I committed a robbery, and, and that got me sent to what's called a state school, which is just a pretty word for jail for teenagers. And I stayed there for three years. Started working right whenever I came out of the, out of the state school as what was called a roughneck. And so you work 12 hours and then you get off and most of the guys would go to town and they would drink. And so that just became my normal thing, right? These were the men in my life. So somebody spoke one weekend about the discipleship program. And after a, a short interview with, with, with the gentleman that leads it, I met up with Trevor Ming. And you know, here was this guy just willing to, to, to set aside his schedule and his life and his, and his stuff to, to come and sit down and talk to me. And early in 2017, I went to a conference in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And that weekend, uh, I did. I went out and I, and I relapsed. I drank again. Uh, it wasn't long after that that there was just a day where there was this coldness in my marriage, and it was it was almost to the point of, hey, you know what? Maybe we could do better for our daughter, for and for ourselves if we were just uh, not together anymore. And none of this was said. It, there was just a, a this division there. And I went and sat down. It was the day that Trevor and I were meeting up, and so I went and sat down with him and. Um, I remember it was sunny, I was sitting out, we were sitting outside and he made me take my glasses off and made me look him in the eye and, and ask me like, do you really want this? Do you want to be married? And I was really beginning to feel this accountability and almost like I had a father disciplining me. And this was something I struggled with is, I didn't understand how to receive God as my father. I knew the scriptures. I knew that when my father and mother abandoned me, that the Lord will take me in, but I didn't understand how he could do that because I didn't know what a father was supposed to be. I didn't know what that was supposed to look like. That was a pivotal moment in my life. So things got a lot better after that. And I remember leaving that day and calling Candace and telling her, hey, everything's gonna be okay. I can't explain it, but everything's gonna be fine. God's, God's got this. And it seemed like everything Trevor had tried to teach me that I wouldn't really let in for the last couple of years, just all that training, all that educating, like just instantly made sense to me. And he said something to me that he was an adult. He was a grown man before he understood what that overwhelmingness of God's grace was. And I started thinking that maybe Maybe the shame that I feel, the guilt that I feel, all the, all the, the dirt and the filth, it's, it's not what God intended me to feel. And my heart really began to soften. If Jesus died just so I can sit on the couch and with a six pack of beer and be entertained, what's the point? 